podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail in about one business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Monday, April 18th, 2011. Almost forgot the date there. And welcome to another edition of All About Android, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. It was a little, felt a little different to me because I was, I'm here. I'm yeah, back. you got so it's, used I'm to like, being wait away. wait a minute. I was so I'm a used little disappointed about being back in my apartment all by myself. I was like, oh, it was, I saw Jason right there. It was awesome. <laughs> it was, yeah, so. You are so welcome to sit across from us. Yeah. Anytime you want. Ron. I know. I'll Go do that more often. I do have to say it was amazing. For those of you who aren't aware of the amazing effort put forth by Jason Howell on the show, I, 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 don't want, I don't know why I never noticed it being on the show now, but he is there. He's switching. He's doing graphics. He's queuing stuff up. He's talking. I don't think I could multitask to that level. So, I Jason, I, I applaud your, your, oh. what you do every week for us. Oh, so thanks. Thanks. That, yeah, that was thank unexpected. You. Yeah. I don't know well, what to say. Great. But well, you know, you have to have, you know, a little pat on the back because you're doing yeah. a lot. I am doing He's a lot. He's got like nine computers Believe in front me. of him. Look at him. Nine <laughs> of them. There's so many Believe computers me. there. At the end of an All About Android episode, I go upstairs and I crawl into a corner and I cry for a little <laughs> oh, bit. No! Like, oh, no! That's God. not the point. You're supposed to be happy after our show. <laughs> no, I, 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 um, oh, I so love sad. this show. I, I, this is one of my favorite parts of the week already. All right. Oh, cool. yay. <laughs> well, this week, uh, Samsung is slapped with a lawsuit. Football. The Bionic could be dead. Uh, and we're going to talk about camera apps on the arena section That's of That's right. Show. Although there are quite a few camera apps to choose from. There's so too many. There's undoubtedly, too many. we're going to talk about a few, and we're going to get tons of emails from people saying, oh, but you missed this one. And that's okay, because then okay. we can talk about those the next week and talk about the ones that you actually love. Because when I do that little poll that you end up voting on, mm -hmm. as you'll see with this week, a lot of people choose other. So I want to know what's in the other bucket, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think of it as us, you know, giving suggestions that you may not have thought about. Maybe right. you don't necessarily use it, but maybe you might transition you yeah, know, exactly. someday and down the line. A lot of times I think we're, um, well, at least I am, I'm trying to show off new apps uh, that aren't well known yet and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get I, them out there I, that I do I use. I always feel so much pressure to come up with the app that no one's ever heard of, and like, and like, and show, show everyone now you can do. change how change how you use a camera on your phone with this app. Mm -hmm. But this week I was lazy and I just did the app I use, so which everybody else uses. But you'll see. So. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. Everybody yeah. else uses it for a reason. You know. <laughs> yeah, All right, should we uh, jump right into it? I think it's time for the news. Boom. All right. Well, we'll start off with. Um, a little bit of news last week. Uh, Google's quarter, uh, first quarter earnings call took place last Thursday. Jeff Huber, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, senior vice president of commerce and local, shared that more than 3 billion Android apps have been installed with downloads up 50% from the previous quarter. And as well, 350,000 devices are being activated every day uh, with strengths in the U.S., Japan, Korea, and Europe. And they noted that international uh, is growing as a whole. Uh, what wasn't stated was the number of free versus paid apps sold during that time, mm. which I think, I mean, yeah. I, I know that there was some sort of comparison that came uh, a while back that, you know, that said just as a whole, Android is much less than, say, the iPhone, the iOS platform, as far as people pay, paying for their apps versus yeah. just getting the free ones. That's the yeah. knock that's heard around the block. Uh, Android people don't pay for apps. I think that's going to change. I think it will. You know? uh, I do have to say I do get really excited about the free app of the day for Amazon. I'm a little crazy about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, it's interesting. I do, and I did for quite a while, and now, like, really? there's just so many games. And I, I love I don't, the game. I don't mean to be a downer. I'm just not playing a whole lot of games. I want mm -hmm. kind of, like, 
lifestyle functional well things, the you know? uh live aquarium wallpaper was free on sunday <laughs> i got that too uh, i have to get in the habit of checking that i'm not checking that nearly oh, as much as i, I need check to it but all the, the time i'm but, crazy in the morning when i get up oh it's a free app of the day and then oh if i'm up past midnight oh i bet the free app of the day is already available i'm you, gonna go check you it really out you really are crazy i am crazy it's a free app of the day i yeah, love it yeah i, I do but, check it sometimes first thing in the morning because i'm go. usually sitting there in a chair feeding my daughter uh right when she wakes up and I got my phone down there. I'm like, what is this? Hey, the look, this is today? free. X ah, Construction, whatever that game, X Construction. Yeah, exactly. Love that game. Oh, my God, I'm stuck on level eight. Uh, it's killing me. How many times have you night? killed the poor train? I've killed, yeah. I've killed all those people. Do you turn off the sound? On that no, game yeah, I turn off the sound, yeah. I have yeah. to because I feel yeah. terrible when I kill them. Yeah, no, but level eight is the one where they introduce the cables, and I can't figure it out. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> Well, no. obviously, this uh, this poses the the fact that we should probably have some sort of a games section I at some point, should. or some sort of a games review to talk about some of these things because it's a it's a huge part of mm -hmm. the marketplace. Um, and but I should just note real quick that uh, you can compare three billion for the quarter uh, that Google announced to Apple's ten billion apps sold in January alone. Uh, wow. Definitely see there that Android still has a little ways to go, <laughs> a lot of ways to go to catch up. Uh, but they're growing fast. I mean, the the rate at which they're they're increasing these sales is exponential exactly. right now. It's it's well, going it's just very getting fast. Better. And on those on those earnings calls, they're just going to tell you the good news. You know what I mean? They're going to tell you the good yeah. numbers because that's 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 Google's opportunity to promote themselves. So if the app sales numbers aren't where they want want them to be yet, they're going to downplay that on the earnings call. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's interesting to see you know folks on the blogs like TechCrunch stuff like that doing the analysis there to see it. I think you know I know I'm gonna I'm gonna start keeping track of how many apps I pay for versus the free ones because mm -hmm. I do find myself paying more often than not recently. And the thing is that like a buck two bucks it's not that bad. And no. to get I, I find myself getting really annoyed by the ads recently um, and so like I'll look for an ad free version if I like the app I like the the, the free version to try it but then I'll upgrade if it's if I use the app and I want to give back to the developer so. yeah you know I, I will find what I'm finding lately is that there are plenty of apps that I downloaded for free like when I first got my phone mm -hmm. and I'm starting to kind of realize now that you know I've had my phone for a year and a half and I've used this app the entire time and it has a paid component Obviously, it's worth $2 to me because mm -hmm. if I've been yeah. using it that much, I might as well give back a little bit to developers a thank you. So I'm totally down with that. Yeah. So um, in some more Google, Google news, some Google news that I find pretty interesting is that they've expanded uh, the NFC check-in support outside of the test market of Portland. So now, um, now you, they've, got, they've added some more cities. They've added Las Vegas, Madison, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, that's a city. <laughs> um, it is a city. No, I almost said Wisconsin is a separate city. That's oh, got it, got it, got it. So Las Vegas, Madison, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Austin, Texas. Um, so if you're out and about in those cities, look for, uh, they've given um, uh, the, a lot of these restaurants stickers that say recommended by Google Places, and they should be NFC enabled, those places. Mm -hmm. So go check it out. If you're in Austin, Madison, Charlotte, or Vegas, let us know if you've tracked any of these down and what your experience has been. Uh, shoot us an email at, at AAA at twit.tv or AAA at twit.tv. Um, I really want to hear whether people are using it and what the experience is like, and it's driving me crazy they haven't rolled it out here in San Francisco because I want to play with it. Me too. Um, I know. Because we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Wrong. You can. We you can. can. Sorry, yep. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean that there's there's a lot there's a lot of phones out there, most phones actually, that don't have <laughs> NFC enabled at all. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, someday, more than not. someday on the curious. Jason Howell watch, you'll have your Oh, phone I'll be too. there someday. But I'll be curious to see what the people's experience who are using it with it, and now that it's getting more into the wild, whether we see people actually using it, what, and if people are going to be talking about it on the blogs or anything like that. Like, that's, like, this is, to me, like, this is the first, like, ooh, a future tech thing that's out there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm hopeful for it. So please, if you're out there, use it. And let us uh, know. Let me All live right. my character. Yeah. Well, um, Android adds carrier billing option for Sprint users. Sprint Android users now have the ability to bill paid apps to their Sprint account, joining the ranks of those on T-Mobile and AT&T in the States. This is a Jason Howell quote. So why yeah. not drop that measly $3 on an app you use all the time? <laughs> Do you ever really look at your statement? I, I don't. I, I, admittedly, I don't. Yeah, I mean, once it's, once it's like a payment tied up into something that you don't ever really look at, I mean, 
really? Are you going to miss Especially it? once I'm on T-Mobile and I have auto pay and it just yeah. pulls it out of my account. I never look at totally. it. And they, they randomly texted me the other day to tell me that like my bill was paid, which they've never done before. Mm. And I, and I called them. I'm like, why are you telling me this? Like I thought something was wrong with it. And so, yeah, but uh, I never look at my statement at all. That's yeah. a bad, that's bad news. Mm. So. <laughs> I mean, it's good news, but maybe it's bad news. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good to to have it all get billed in kind of one account as opposed to all those little microtransactions hitting your credit card. But still, you're going to pay it at the end of the day. So whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or you know, I I have a separate kind of debit account that is kind of my own, you know, mm -hmm. kind of spending. Both my wife and I have those accounts for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I have my Google connected to that, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of out of the way, and and I never see it anyways. It just kind of comes out and. It's Although, my money, so who cares? You know, I'll buy depending that. Depending on depending on how you pay for your apps, if you have your Google account linked up to a credit card, this could be a way to get interest free credit on apps. Oh. Because you're not paying it for it until you pay your bill at the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas, like me, I have a key in my debit account, so it come, I lose the money immediately. But if I was going to a credit card. I'd be getting the payment at the end of the month and then paying interest on top of that, whereas you paying through my the phone company, you avoid the interest. Yeah. Good yeah. Point. There you go. Yes. Hey, there you go. <laughs> if you're buying so money, the the interest you're paying on it is a problem, then maybe you might have a bigger issue. <laughs> Smart money with Ron That's Richards. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into hardware. Boom. Awesome. Ron, you've yes. had the Zoom. I had the Zoom. It has been the, handed to you. The Zoom has been handed to me by Jason last week when I was in Petaluma, and I've been playing with it. I've been trying to I, – I do own an iPad, and I've been trying to use the Zoom exclusively as opposed to my iPad. That's like kind of my like, – like give, it, give it my test run. Um, I got to admit, I liked it with an asterisk. Um, I, I, really, I, I really enjoyed the feel of it. I don't think it's too heavy. Although I do feel the the weight, I do I, I do understand where those comments come from. Mm -hmm. um, I like the kind of widescreen, you know, the, the 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 rectangular kind of screen is a little different than the iPad, which is more it's more of a more closer to a square than a rectangle. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was great for watching video. It was great for music. I got the RDO app running on it, and I, I had it playing while I was walking around the house and stuff like that. I, I set up the dock and set that up in my kitchen, and I was listening to music while I was cooking, so that was cool. Um, I was able to install all my apps. The sync stuff worked really great. Um, I know, you know, the chat room can drink every time I talk about uh, graphically or reading comics on uh, these devices. But I got to admit, reading comics, uh, digital comics on this on this tablet, I liked slightly better than the iPad because of the aspect ratio, because of that rectangular. It's a little more like a page. Um, similar also with the Kindle app, reading uh, reading books on it was really nice as well. Um, my only gripes from it are the stuff Motorola did to the OS, like, like what? I. I I can't stand the um, widget browsing application. Oh, wait, yeah. the thing, the, the carousel kind of thing? Yeah, the carousel thing that comes up along the bottom. Um, I'll try to pull it up now. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see it. My, yeah. Yes, yeah. I totally agree. It's, it's, uh, if I understand what they were doing. It's like, here, you can see visually every single widget that you oh, have I the don't opportunity like that to do. You're right. yeah. But it's almost overwhelming. You don't really know what you're looking at after a while. Exactly. And especially if you have an app like, oh, I don't know, our favorite calendar app called Jort, yeah. which has like 90 different widgets that you oh, can yeah. choose. Oh, yeah. And you keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And it's like, exactly. I don't need to know how many, mm. you know, yep. versions. Just let me, do, give me a simple drop down menu. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they, they made they made the custom modifications because they could. And don't get me wrong, I like how it zooms out and you can see all the different screens in that carousel kind of format. And that's pretty cool to choose from the different, to slide from the different home screens. Mm -hmm. But choosing widgets, um, changing wallpaper, I just found myself going, ah. And like, even like the icons along the bottom, like the home icon and the, the back button and stuff like that, For it took me a while to be like, what is that? Like, what, like... Mm. It took me a while to figure out how to access the menu. It um, did I don't, too. Yeah, I had the same. I had the same issue. Like, wait, I'm not, it just felt I'm, weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not in love with the notification bar being on the lower right hand corner. I got used to it on the phone. Like being a you know quote unquote power Android user, um, I got used to it being up top and pulling it down as opposed to pulling it up. Mm -hmm. um, just little things like that where like I don't like superfluous changes for the sake of changing them. Um, but other than that, it's been great. Um, oh, and the one little anecdote is that when I got it, when I came home with it uh, last Monday night, it literally took me maybe 20 minutes to figure out how to turn it on. <laughs> because so you actually were stung by the fact that the power button was on the back. Yes, totally. <laughs> which is totally stung got so by many it. like tweets about that, like, were you able to turn it on? I, I was like, know. well, yeah, I knew it was on. Like, the back. I literally, like, I was sitting here and I'm like, 
swiping and I'm and like there's the notification light up here and I'm like maybe that's a press sense pressure button so I'm pressing that I'm pressing the the volume buttons I'm looking all over the place I totally disregarded where the power button is back here because I thought that was part of the camera uh, and I, 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 you know, I think that's a bit of a design flaw in terms of the hardware. I think it needs a, a clear power button along the top or something like that. Yeah. But other than that, that was my only uh, gripe. Um, I did run the battery down after about two and a half days of use, uh, of like hardcore use, um, and charge it back up. And even right now, it's at about 80%. Mm -hmm. So it's not even that, that drain that badly. So, All right. Um, yeah, All I right dig on. it. Well, I'm, you'll... I, you get to have it for a little bit longer because I'm Ooh. not going to see you so for yeah. a while to, to retrieve it. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, you know, keep going. Tell yeah, us no. more. And I, if I had $600 laying around or whatever, how much the Wi-Fi is, I would totally pick one up. And actually, a friend of mine was over this weekend, and he's an Android guy, and I recommended I show, he played with it, and he's like, oh, I'm totally getting it now. So, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on, here's some breaking news. Apple is suing Samsung for copying the iPhone and iPad. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Apple is suing Samsung for copying, quote, the look and feel of its iPad and iPhone. The Samsung Galaxy S 4G has a strikingly similar appearance to that of the Apple devices mentioned, for example. It's hard to say if the beef is with the hardware makeup of the Samsung devices or the way their TouchWiz UI overlay operates. According to Engadget, the claim... Here's, here's the quote from them. The claim for intellectual property infringement is phrased as follows. Rather than innovate and develop its own technology and a unique Samsung style for its smartphone products and computer tablets, Samsung chose to copy Apple's technology, user interface, and innovative style in these infringing products. I mean, the phone does look somewhat similar, but I, I don't know what do you guys think. I think so, little... I mean, so does this mean that Sharp can so sue Samsung for, sure. uh, for their TV designs? <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, is Apple going to sue? Overboard to me. Yeah, yeah. Is Apple I mean, going to sue Asus for making a, a, a silver colored laptop? I mean, you know, it's 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 it, this is the problem with copyright infringement and trademark and all right. stuff like that. Is that how deep do you want to get into it? Like, did they if they stole their code or stole their schematics? Absolutely. But beyond that, sorry, you know what I mean? Like, the, the yeah. world is made of ripoffs. So I don't know. Exactly. Why well, are you calling thing. Samsung a ripoff? No, no, no. But I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, no, there are no, there are no new, there are no, there are no truly original ideas. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it goes yeah, back to Apple. True. Apple. I mean, should Xerox, should Xerox should have sued Apple back in the day for stealing the the the, the OS. You know, like the Apple's yeah, exactly. people as well. When you know, it comes so. to technology, there yeah. there are those that come out with a completely original idea, and then yeah. the many countless kind of riffs off of that idea I mean, that ultimately spawn from it. It's just does kinda, this mean uh, that Apple's scared? I mean, why, why? You know, right. they're clearly a leader in many, you know, well, we, aspects. I mean, we covered this on TNT. If you haven't seen t the episode of Tech TNT. News today, watch that because we definitely <laughs> talked about this a little bit. But in pre-show, we were kind of chatting about it. And Tom Merritt made a really good point, which is that, you know, if if their beef was with Android as a whole, then they're going after the big dog. And that might not be the best approach here. They're going after Samsung, kind of a smaller fish compared to yeah. the, the uber-sized Google. Yeah. And if they win, then they actually have a foot to stand on uh, or a leg to stand on with other phones as well. I, mm -hmm. I guess it really depends on what they mean by look and feel because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the screenshots, you know, the side-by-side -side of the schematic uh, of the iPhone, you know, next to the Samsung, yes, there are similarities, but it's kind of like Android has the stacks of icons as well, you know, as, yeah. as, as the iPhone, I guess. Is it the dock, the fact that the Samsung, you know, uh, what is it? The Samsung, da -da 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 -da, what is the name of their, is it TouchWiz? TouchWiz UI. Is it the fact that it has four icons down there, which mimics an iPhone versus like the, the regular vanilla but Android has two totally down there? So you can't, so you can't have rows of icons then? You can't yeah, have rows I, of yeah. four icons? Yeah, exactly. Like where do you draw so the line? Lame. It, yeah, it's so I mean, and it's it's really I mean, I and that's a really good point uh, about it being like a legal kind of like testing water to see how it's received and whether they can go wide with it. Right. But everything is derivative. Everything is yeah, derivative, absolutely. especially in technology. You know, and so it's it, I just don't see. I'll be surprised if they go any any further with this. And now, admittedly, I will give them credit. The Samsung is eerily similar. It's very close, you know, like yeah. it would be, you know, like it's not like they're going after the, you know, the Moto Blur because that's such a different kind of interface <laughs> yeah. and that sort of thing, you know, and they're not going after Android because it's a whole other platform. So maybe this is like, it's just too close for comfort and the changes Samsung made, Apple just wants them to change them a little bit. I don't know, who knows, but, but yeah. at the end of the day, you can't 
it's, you can't you can't get this uppity about it. Right. So. And yeah. the other similarity too is that the TouchWiz has you don't have an app drawer that opens from the bottom. It's just side, which is very similar to the iPhone, yeah. where you know all your apps are just laid out side by side. And I didn't know that about TouchWiz. Uh, yeah. Also pointed out earlier to me today, and I was like, okay, yeah, I can kind of see it, but. I don't know. They just seem so broad. Uh, anyways, we should move along because we're getting uh, we're getting long in the news, and we got lots of apps to get to. Um, so the Droid Charge is coming out on Verizon. There's some uh, training docs that have been leaked, and I'll actually put that up right here. Uh, which, if you if you take a look, it also points out that the Charge actually has 10 Wi-Fi hotspot connectability. So if uh, Wi-Fi hotspots are a big deal to you, this might be the phone to look into. And a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, uh, and it compares them against all the other top of the heap Android devices right now. And if you take a look, you'll see that the Droid Bionic is not listed there. And uh, we, <laughs> speaking of this, I've been tweeted and we've been emailed yeah. quite a bit by a few people <laughs> about a piece in Phone Arena. Uh, blog or a news site called Phone Arena, which I'll put up here. Uh, unconfirmed reports point to the possibility that Motorola might kill the Droid Bionic, which was shown at the 2011 wow. Consumer Electronics Show. So it was expected Crazy. to arrive in, in the second quarter, uh, but reportedly it's been plagued with issues from power management to the NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor. And because of this, Motorola is rumored to be focusing their efforts on their upcoming Targa LTE phone. And some are saying that this replacement could be well worth the wait. Wait and see. But none of that is confirmed by Motorola uh, in any way whatsoever so far. And some sources who are, quote, in the know, which, you know, who, who knows what that means, are claiming that the release is simply delayed. So you got a lot of people forming up on the Droid Bionic is dead in the water. A lot of other people saying that it's simply delayed. Either way, you guys might have to pick a new device for me. I'm not going to yet. Not until I'm not. I was about to say I'm not going to let go of my bet yet uh, that you're going to get the Bionic until I know for sure it's dead. Yeah, I exactly. Think I think the bloggers caught wind of my weighing in on, on the bet, and they're like, oh, oh well, yeah, it so it's, it's a conspiracy against me. No, but, but really, <laughs> um, from what I know of these big companies, you don't get a product to the point where the Bionic is and then bail on it. It's I really hard to believe. Them. That would they showed yeah. it off at CES. This yeah. was the big new phone that's coming out yep. later in the year. Why? I mean, really, yeah. when it came to, to their phones at CES, it was the Atrix and it was the Bionic. Yep. For the most yep. part, mm -hmm. if you went to their booth, that's what they were really, really pimping and pushing. And so unless that'd be really there, unless there's something really wrong with it, like it's really causing like people's ears to bleed or like something like really, they're not going to scrap it. I, 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 it. This might be similar to the fact that the Targa is on the, on the horizon and maybe mm -hmm. Bionic got delayed a little more and people jumped into conclusions. But until Motorola chimes in and says, this is what we're doing, you yeah. can't believe any of it my bet stands yeah so it is mine i don't know yeah. my gut kind of tells me that that it's not going anywhere but i guess who knows that would be a really big ball to drop if right. if that happened i mean that's yeah. they put so much marketing effort and energy and money into the droid bionic so yeah. uh, that would be very yeah. interesting to see who knows but if it does get scrapped and i needed to find a new phone to predict for you it's too bad you're not on t-mobile jason <laughs> because uh because uh t-mobile's announced that the hcc sensation 4g is official and it's coming to t-mobile um this is a this is a slick phone i like this phone a lot um so it's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core dual, dual core processor it's got the qhd display and sense 3.0 on there there. Um, it pretty much matches the Evo's Evo 3D specs that it's got um, an 8, pic 8 megapixel real rear camera, 1028p resolution, um, and it's got the latest version of HEC Sense. Um, so it's pretty cool. Those in the UK, Germany, and, and the key European markets will see it launch in mid-May, and then we're going to see it here in the US sometime this summer. Um, and this looks, I mean, this phone is a lot like the Nexus One next version of the Nexus One. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's you know, got that HEC, it's got the speaker along the top, Mm -hmm. um, I really, I, I like the, I like this phone a lot. I was excited to see it coming to T-Mobile, and now I got to consider whether I'm going to stick with my my Nexus S or not. Yeah, no, I was thinking the same thing. Yep, I was exactly. thinking, hmm, maybe I might get this one. I just, I, I use my phone a lot, yep. and uh, I use it. You know, I'm, I'm a heavy user with it, so I want the processing. I, I, I yep. want the power. So this might. Be and what's killer? What's killer also, at least for me, is that I use it as a phone. Uh, you know, like I have no other mm -hmm. phone. I, I do business. I do conference calls. And whoa, stuff like whoa, that. whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, hot shot. Is you it use crazy? your phone as a phone <laughs> it's in amazing. this day and age? Amazing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but that said, while the Nexus S has been good, I love my Nexus One. You know, and if this is the next generation of the Nexus One, then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm thinking about it, you know, so. Yeah, it uh, looks pretty nice. And I got to say, like, I'm not, I, I mean, I've never actually owned a phone that had a skinned UI, mm -hmm. but the yeah. new Sense actually looks pretty slick. Mm. I mean, it yeah, looks I'm like if you didn't have it 
and you know, like Launcher Pro is a way to you know change your launching yeah. abilities uh, on your phone. If you didn't have it, it would look like a positive way to skin your phone on mm -hmm. your own. It just so happens that they're making the decision for you. <laughs> so I guess you could choose you know as you will with that. And, and it is a four. It is a four point three inch phone. If you go back to our size discussion, right. before, it's a, it's on it's on the hefty side. So if you're worried about yeah. the size of it, then maybe it's not for you. But so. not worried about that at all. I want a hefty phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Maybe then Jason will get this phone and switch carriers. <laughs> hey, you think we need right. to move on to apps? Let's do it. All right. Moving right into apps here. Uh, let's see here. So there was a little bit of news over uh, the end of last week. You may have heard it. Uh, Skype. Well, first of all, let's start with Skype for video. Skype uh, with video calling uh, for the HTC Thunderbolt leaked out onto uh, the internet. And overall, it sounds like the app and the service uh, were a win. They were getting some pretty positive reviews and kind of looks, looks cool. It'd be nice to have a little Skype action and see what they finally come through with. Uh, and that would be amazing, right? Well, uh, just so happens that there may be a little sour point to that news. Just in case that Android police discovered a vulnerability in the upcoming Skype for video uh, or Skype video for Android app, which then led him, led him to discover the same vulnerability in the Skype for Android app available right now that many people have. It leaves certain users vulnerable to the sharing of cached profile uh, information as well as, you know, say your instant messages, contact information, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Skype confirmed the flaw in a statement last Friday and gave no timetable for the fix. The flaw would, in order for you to actually be susceptible to something, you would have to have Skype obviously installed on your phone, but the flaw would require a third-party app that actually exploits that vulnerability to be installed on the same phone as the Skype app. So it's kind of like a, a ticking time bomb, essentially. You know what I mean? Like there probably aren't that many, there are, probably aren't any apps that we know of out there exploiting this specific flaw in Skype. But now that everybody knows that there is a specific flaw in Skype to be exploited, who knows? Somebody may be working on it. So just it just basically reinstates the reminder that, that just kind of goes, you know, that's good to repeat to yourself when you're installing third-party apps, which is, do I trust the source? Do I know exactly where this is coming from? Because uh, you just got to be sure. You, you don't know. So just be careful installing third-party apps because, you know, they might exploit that. And speaking of third-party apps, uh, a couple weeks ago or last week, you talked about uh, Groove Shark being pulled from the App Store because of uh, suits, I believe, from various music companies. And uh, guess what? Groove Shark is back, and uh, you can get it at m.grooveshark.com. Yeah, uh, not back in the marketplace, but... Right, not back in the marketplace, but you can just get it on their website. Mm -hmm. And I have it here loaded, uh, if you don't know it already, but this is what Groove Shark looks like. Uh, if you have a premium account, you can stream. Uh, there's a radio playlist. It's all free. Uh, well, if you have a VIP account, which I do, it's about $3 a month. Um, but I, the knock with Groove Shark is the fact that it's not just legally uh, streamed music. It's also illegal music from users. So that's so it's kind users of the uploading their own music to exactly, the service. That too. Yeah, it's kind of so, like a peer to peer kind of. It's like almost like a access point kind of like Kazaa was but you could listen to the music mm -hmm. kind of almost yeah that's um it, it's interesting how it's it's a community based kind of cloud mm -hmm. which i can see why the the record companies would be all over that yeah. yeah i really like the service i like i like this app i think it's really slick um it's back if you want to download it from groove shark themselves yeah. yeah i don't know if it's back it's just available again. well right that's yeah, kind of. The, I mean, it's yeah. If you already had of, it before, of Android, right? Yeah, if right you there. already yeah. had it before, you still have it. Yeah. But, uh, Are you playing music? I'm playing a little music. Are you playing "Blinded by the Light"? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn that off now because everyone. Great. Is uh, you played that great. in pre-show, and I finally wiped <laughs> it from my memory, and no, it's and back. now it's back. <laughs> oh, "Blinded by the Light" once again. Sorry. Save us, Ron. <laughs> so, so one more quick app for you. Um, with Earth Day coming up this uh, this week, this Friday, April 22nd is Earth Day, you might want to pitch in. So uh, the very um, iOS-esque named iRecycle app is now available for Android. Um, where <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? 
<laughs> and and it's it's it's, it's it makes sense. I, I recycle, so that's what it is. Yeah, I and and it's uh, Android as well as uh, the App Store on iPhone. So maybe yeah. they were naming it for the iPhone. They're like, oh, and you guys too. Yeah, well, I guess we got to do that. <laughs> but um, but it's a neat little app that gives you information and access to over eight hundred thousand recycling and disposal resources uh, for over two hundred forty materials. So if you want to do your part to help save the uh, save the Earth, you could do it with your app on Android. So that's pretty cool. All right, and that's nice. your thing. If not, that's not what really you like is the it, earth and stuff. I know. <laughs> I recycle. I recycle. I do too. I'm not, I'm not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's. Uh, we've got, we've got the arena to jump into here in a second. But before we do, let's talk about a little Netflix action. Uh, Netflix, which I gotta say, I used a decent amount over the weekend. Eileen, you did as well. I had to rehab after the uh, NAB show in Vegas. And all I did was sit on my couch and I watched a ton of streaming mu movies with Netflix. I watched The Girl Who Played With Fly Fire last night, Dead Snow, great uh, Nazi Dog zombie Snow. movie. Yeah. Uh, and The Good Guys, kind of a rom-com. Um, wasn't really that funny. But uh, all on the comforts of my couch, remote stream. Love it. Loved no, the instant stream is awesome. I actually watched a couple of documentaries. I watched Smash That Camera, which is actually about a guy I'd never heard of, but I, I'm sure you've seen plenty of his photos. He's a, pop, a pretty famous paparazzi photographer, uh, Ron Galea, I believe, or Galela. Uh, but it's just kind of an interesting kind of uh, uh, view into the paparazzi lifestyle. And then American Grindhouse, which is all about Grindhouse uh, cinema, which I, I love Hollywood uh, docs, but they have a cool. ton of those docs on there, in fact, yeah. so uh, and a huge documentary section. Uh, so basically, Netflix delivers those movies right to your home, saves you time, money, and hassle. You can get the through-the-mail DVD service, or what we're talking about, you can get the uh, instant streaming. If you have a, in, an internet-ready device, like an Xbox 360, PS3, Nintendo Wii, you can stream it to your PC. Hopefully soon, you can stream it to your phone. I don't know. You know, we'll we'll see when that happens. That's but. why you should get Netflix if you don't already have it to be ready. Yeah, when you the Netflix be a, app comes to the Android, you'll be ready. Yeah, you, you want to be ahead of the account. game. You really want to be at the head of the game on this one. Uh, you can watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want. There are never any late fees, no due dates. Uh, plus, you can get those DVDs in the mail in about one business day. So, uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, be sure and sign ah, it's just jumping all over the place be sure to sign up for a free trial at netflix.com slash twit and you want to do that because then they know that we helped send you there uh, and you can instantly watch any of these movies that we talked about any of the tv shows uh, when you register for a free trial membership so go to netflix.com slash twit and we thank netflix for their support of tn of uh, twit as well as all about android <sighs> thank you netflix <laughs> thank you jason this is it's a little hard doing ad reads and stuff. I'll get there. I promise I'll get there. But I bet uh, you know what will help? Oh, what's if that? If we go to the arena. I agree. Let's do it. Let's jump in. To enter. One lives. The Android Arena. Boom. All right. We're there. So, folks, first of all, we should probably talk about a little poll action from last week. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Last week we uh, had a discussion and on to do lists. On to do lists. To do yeah, apps. You. To do apps. And I think uh, you'll find some in, uh, interesting information here. Let's see here. Everybody likes other. Yeah. yeah. Other, All the time. Other was pretty darn popular. Uh, other came in first place. Second place was todo.txt with 26% uh, of the that's votes. Tina's app. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, but yes, Other was uh, pretty filled. And I think once we get to the email section, I'll just go ahead yeah. and we'll, we'll share a few of those uh, apps that fall into Other. I don't think we could ever talk about as I many know. apps as there are in a certain category. So. There's yeah. so many options, especially in that to-do category. So it's and just everybody's like, yeah. Everybody's different. It's, you know, yeah. everybody. I mean, just today, somebody emailed you should try X app. And I looked at it, I'm like, ooh, this one is really nice. I should take a look at it. I didn't know about it. So it just depends on you, again, and, and what, you, uh, what your needs are. Everyone's different. That's right. All right, so this week, we're going to talk about camera apps. And this is kind of a hard one to uh, pinpoint because, again, it's one of those categories that's kind of a catch-all. There are a ton of different ca camera apps. They all fall into different, like, subcategories of camera apps. Right. Are we talking um, Photoshop kind of things? Um, right, post-processing. Yeah. That sort of thing. I think in this in this case, we're talking about the apps that allow you to actually take a picture with the app and do a little bit of processing with the within the app and then maybe share those out. Um, and so let me see if I can get my phone up here. 
Do, 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 do. As you can see today, I'm actually getting a little uh, confused. You had to go ahead and say something, Ron, about my ability to multitask, and it totally <laughs> shot it. I jinxed shot it. it in the foot. <laughs> you, you jinxed me. All right, so I'm actually going to talk about Vignette, and Vignette is an app. Here's actually a uh, a sample photograph of Eileen in the Ooh, studio. Hey, Ooh, I totally you just took that, and look at me. I'm like ah. I know. In action. I actually realized while you guys were talking that um, when I wiped out one of my ROMs and, and reinstalled it, it didn't have Vignette automatically installed. So I had to install on the fly. Oh. So <laughs> I installed and then I took this picture so that I had at least a picture to show you guys. <laughs> but Vignette is actually a very popular app. The, 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 main, uh, the main downside that I have for it is that it's, it's a processor intensive app. So using it as a camera replacement for my phone, for the Motorola Droid, isn't necessarily the best option in the world because it's just not powerful enough to run it quickly. It can mm -hmm. do it, and I can do a lot of things with it. And it's, you know, it's a, a wonderful app, but in, the, in a pinch when I've got like a moment happening in front of me and I just want to pull out my camera real quick and take a quick picture, uh, it's, it's not as quick to respond as maybe the stock app. But here's the interface, and the reason that I actually paid for this app is because this is, this is what you look at when you take a picture. And I don't know if the settings are ever present here from when I had it installed before I redid my, um, my install, but I had it set so that you could take it anywhere and it'll automatically take the picture. And I really like that because sometimes I don't want to have to, you know, find on the screen the, the magical button mm -hmm. that, you know, I have to press. And if I'm taking a picture of myself with somebody, you never know where you're hitting you know, on the screen. So it's nice to have the ability to do that. The uh, vignette has a lot of a lot of different types of effects that you can use. And if I'll go down here, you can you know you've got a quick bar down at the bottom for the different options that you can set on, on the fly. Uh, flash, uh, you know, number of megapixels in the camera. But what you'll see here is all of these settings. This is kind of a downside to vignette. It's very powerful, but the settings and the way that you get to these things aren't necessarily the best to look at. They're just kind of a simple stack of drop-down menus that you can pull from. So you can create an unlimited number of different combinations of these things and have them saved to different folders and file names and all of these different effects and everything, but it's just going to take you a little bit of guesswork on, on fumbling through it. Up at the top here is like the toy camera. If I pull that down, I've got all these different categories of different uh, kind of pictures that I can take. And I can program any of these and kind of set up a profile for it and then add it to a favorite so that it's there on a whim. And you can, you know, you can choose a frame. So if I want it to be, uh, you know, very customized, like a square frame with a border or a circle rounded border or whatever, the options are, are endless. You're just going to have to spend some time and it's not the, the prettiest UI to, to play with, especially when you're talking about a, a camera app where, you know, you kind of expect things to be good to look at. Um, but, I, but ultimately, I mean, if you're willing to kind of put in the time to create these things, you can create a shortcut for your home that will always take a picture uh, with those settings that you've set, or you can just add them to your list of favorites. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, kind of straightforward from there. I really, honestly, I bought it because I liked how you take pictures with it. And all of the processing after the fact was kind of a bonus. Like I said, it takes a lot of processor though. So you have to be able to, well, actually one thing that I will say about the Zoom, because when I got the Zoom and logged into my Google account, moved all the apps over and everything, man, it, it, it played like a dream. It was Ooh, awesome. I was nice. like, this is Ooh. what it could be like. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it could be like someday when I have a good phone that can actually run it. So I'm really looking forward to getting a new phone so that I can run Vignette. So that's Vignette. Look forward in the marketplace, or you can install it from the QR code that I put up earlier in the segment. How much is it again? Uh, how much is it? I believe it's three ninety nine. Let okay. me take a mm. look here. No, sorry. Uh, sorry. It's $4.07. Four dollars and seven cents. I almost gypped you out of well, eight cents there. You know what it does is great, though. I really like all the processing that you can do, and it looks, uh, you know, more superior than a lot of apps in terms of the camera function itself. Mm -hmm. um, I am uh, looking at a new, a relatively new app called Little Photo, and uh, unlike a lot of people, I'm not really concerned. I, I'm more concerned about the processing and what I could do with it. Um, my app, you can take a picture uh, through the app, but I always like to use the native camera myself. I don't know why. Really? I just do. Um, and I like to just use that and then take several pictures and then go into an app and, um, and process it and go through that mm -hmm. after the fact. There's a lot of apps out there that don't allow you to do that, and it bugs me. I like the choice. Wow. I like 
can I just open up the app and take the photo, or can I pull in an old photo and process it? And not I've never, even, I've never even thought about that as an option. I mean, like, because all the camera apps I played with have been process, you take the picture, and then process it. I don't like um, that option. <laughs> you, just, you kind of blew my mind. Now I didn't. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I, I, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> well, little photo, and I think vignette, you could do that too. You could pull in, you can pull in old photos, right, in vignette, or do you have to take the photo? Yeah, that's a good question. I've never actually looked into doing that with vignette. Oh, okay. Um, I just like the option. I'll I look, I'll look at it. You know, Keep I talking, really, yeah. I think not to, I know we, we, we talk a lot about Apple and iOS and Android and stuff like that, but you were an iPhone user for years, mm -hmm. and I think that's an iPhone thing. Whereas is on Android, we're, you, we're used to the camera apps be, providing the camera as well and then processing it from there. I've never come, come across an app that had post-processing. Oh, so, not that they don't exist. I'm for sure phone, they do. But for it, pictures mind, that you didn't you know. take with the app? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm about to... Yeah, I'm not every every time I do a demo, I always feel like I have like major fail in my demo. So I'm going to try and not have a fail here, <laughs> but um, maybe it will. Uh, okay, so okay, so here we go. I took a picture of uh, Jason and I using my front forward camera there. Ooh, let's see if this angle here is going to work or not. And now uh, I've loaded it. Uh, I used it, and I went ahead and loaded it after the fact. But you could also take a picture within the app as well. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I've got all of these options here. Effect 1, Effect 2. You can even layer photos. Uh, what I'm going to first do, I'm going to rotate it. So, take a little while. So, there we are. And then I'm going to add an effect, whatever I want. There's so many effects. Take a look at all of that. Do I want a window light? No. Then you could just kind of oh, I like check, that. check it out. Cool. Um, I just love all of the options. So here I'm going to choose this, and then let's see, I'm going to go back and uh, reload, and then let me see, an effect two. These are the hokey effects. Ooh, magic powder. You uh. know? <laughs> Hell, fire. Oh, my ah. God. I'm going to apply all of that. And then there's like a That's comic cool. effect. So you can stack effects. Look at that. You could, saying, you could right? totally a stack oh, effects, which is very cool. And then later, well, I've already, let's see, I want to get out of that. Oops. Now, um, so I've done something really crazy, and then there's even tools. I could uh, write text. I could draw. Um, lots of you know various uh, settings, and then when I'm done, oh look, I'm gonna pull, look at our photo, Jason. That is beautiful. And then I could save, and then of course I could share, just like you would share, you know, uh, normally on Android on whatever. Um, it's very cool. Uh, you know, Tumblr's whatever you already have loaded. Whatever you have installed. Yeah, yeah. whatever you have installed. Um, and I'm going to save that photo. And then it gives you, lets you, gives you a little uh, place on your SD card. I went crazy with our photo. I hope that's okay, Jason. That, get that's Wah! okay. Hell I'm fire. the only part of that photo that's clear. Everything um, else is broken up. You can have the option to <laughs> save your original photo or not. Uh, the highest resolution is 800 pi uh, pixels. Uh, pixels yeah. And uh, may not work. Look here. It gives you that that option there you could also buy um there there's also uh i don't want to say attachments but uh, i'm going to exit to the camera there's that's what it looks like there you could buy um extra tools mm -hmm. you know for brightness and like contrast a, i don't like really plugins? think i need it plugins yeah that's it okay. i was looking for the word um i don't think i really need that but um i i really enjoy this app oh, you know i gotta start from scratch so do you have your gallery set up to use little photo to preview is that kind of what you're doing there because you, yeah. you were in the stock gallery app, mm -hmm. but then when you went to view it, it automatically opened up yeah. the photo. Was that a preference that you said? No, that's just included in the app. You're allowed to pull from your photo gallery from the app. Oh, but you got, you got into that gallery through the app. Yeah, I, I did. see. I was thinking you yeah. got into the gallery just from the link. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. Check it out. And the, the awesome part about it is this app is free. So wow. uh, That's cool. <laughs> you get a lot for, I, you know, these, these extra plugins are $1.99, but I feel like I get a ton just using this app. It is my new favorite camera app in. Yeah, you've been raving Android about it. Android. I can see totally see why. That's really I cool. have been Check raving yeah. so much about it. It's insane. Um, yeah. I took a couple, my very first photo. I don't know if you have it there online. Um, oh, well, let's see here. I believe so. It's the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> I just, I love this photo just because I got a lot of really good. Oh, there we go. That. I gave oh, it wow, some that's really clothes. cool. That's really nice. It didn't look like that originally, but I kind of played with the settings and whatnot, and there it is. Yeah. Is that the Hellfire setting? No, it's the, uh, <laughs> I can't remember which one that is. And, might be, uh, and what might about be the dream. sashimi? The sashimi was just very nice. I gave it, um, 
Good the framing. fresh fruit filter, and then gave it a border frame. Yes, which you can do fresh also fruit here. Fruit filter. Yes, <laughs> and that's <laughs> one of the tools you could fruit. give it borders. Simple frame. You could even do um, a, a, a bokeh effect, which is um, uh, photography, like bringing to the forefront and then you know mm -hmm. blurring everything else in the background. There's just some crazy oh, stuff. Cool. One thing All I, for free. One thing I really like about yours that I can tell you right now, Vignette does not do is that live preview. Um, yeah. having, having the ability to kind of go through the menu, select something, see the changes immediately, and know at that point whether you want to take those changes or not. Vignette's a little bit more of a shot in the dark. Yeah, that's yeah that, that annoys me with apps, and yeah. I don't download those no. apps that, that do that. So that, That's my biggest complaint on my app that I'm looking for, and we could segue onto What's my app. What's your app? Let's go to um, you, Ron. Well, yeah, I, use, I'm, I still stick with FX Camera. Uh -huh. Which is the app I, re I reviewed on App Judgment, like right on um, Revision Three when we started, like two years ago, I think. Um, and for me, I'm not a big photo guy. Like I'm not, like I'm not the one who's always taking pictures of his friends and doing all stuff like that. I'll take a picture every now and then, and that sort of thing. Um, but I just wanted an app that would give me some uh, more customizations other than just a standard stock camera. You know, little filters and things like that. Um, it uh, it's got a great. Uh, and you, here, you take a look at a uh, couple of apps, screenshots from there. Um, it's got a filter called Toy Cam, which is the one I use the most, which, there you go, Eileen's got it up there, um, which does a, a lot of play with color saturation and gives it that really kind of retro feel. Um, it's got a filter that lets you put a uh, pole Android, which lets you make a Polaroid. Um, it's got a fisheye one. It's got this uh, Andy Warhol effect, which I never use, and the symmetry one I never use. But um, I just like the way it works, and I like how um, you can customize the, the f specific filters themselves. So like on Toy Cam, there's a ton of different settings as far as the color depth and color saturation that you want to use. Um, you can set up a shortcut so you can launch the app right into the filter of your choice. So that's pretty cool. So uh, straight off of uh, right out of the... Um, Right out of the watchmall, right out of the, the launch screen, I can just launch right into Toy Cam. Mm. Um, the one, the one bit of frustration I have with it is that, like Jason, like you said with vignette, is that you take the if you take a picture with the camera, it processes it, and then you say save or discard. And sometimes I might like the picture, but I didn't like the effect, but I wanted to save the picture. Right. And I can't save the picture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's totally. the big problem. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this, is, it's, this app has just been a bit of a workhorse for me. And, it, and I just noticed, as Eileen, as you're playing with it, I, did, I didn't notice this on a recent update, but it looks like you can access the gallery and post process photos. That yeah. You take. So that's look so at me cool. with my foot in my mouth complaining about or saying how I've never had access to that before. And I just didn't look for it. But um, <laughs> I like that. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, I mean, and, you know, pretty much every photo I take, I'm doing through the toy cam filter. Um, so, Jason, I don't know if you, you can pull it. I have a couple of links in the doc, in our doc in there, but you can see a couple of pictures I took of, you know, just that, you know, I, I love the way it looks at baseball games mm -hmm. or um, I took a great picture. I'm sorry, there's a fire truck going by my house now. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. But <laughs> there's, uh, yeah, so I always get great pictures at AT&T Park or I, I got a great shot at JFK Airport, the LTWA um, uh, terminal, which you know has that good retro feel and the colors, and it was a it was a beautiful Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and I got a lot of blues out of it, and that's sort of cool. So um, yeah, so I don't know. It's just it's just a fun little app that lets you add a little more tweaks to your photos, other than just taking the standard photos, which is all I really want from it. So cool. that's my choice. Awesome. Well, it's old standby. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I, you know, I had that app installed a while ago, I, and I just didn't really use it a whole lot. I was like, mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't think about using it. Um, my my whole tear was finding something to replace the stock camera app as far as taking pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that one's definitely a lot more just focused on the post processing. But it, it look it always did a good job when I used it. I just never thought to use it. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's know. it's just because the camera interface also is slightly different from the standard stock camera. There's just a big button for a focus and then a big button to take the picture. Although I do like what Vignette has where you can make the entire screen just take the picture. That's pretty cool because really, I mean, how many times you're taking pictures, but then when you go hand your phone to somebody and be like, oh, can you take a picture for me? You're going to spend like yeah. five minutes telling them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so th that UI thing is something I want to look into to find a camera replacement that with like a much easier, cleaner UI than the standard stock one. So yeah. right, cool. All right, well, take a look at the uh, the list here. You can actually vote on the poll here. It's poll.cm slash one one four seven poll.cm slash eleven forty seven. And let us know. There's a few more camera apps in here that we didn't talk about, but.
I'm sure we missed something in there. I know we did. In fact, this is probably retro a huge. Retro camera I used because I, I like those effects and things like that, but I couldn't stand the UI. Mm -hmm. Like they, they just got too fancy with the, with the dinky little cameras and the, the, the shutter release button. And, like, and it was just like, oh, it's too much crap. Just give me the photo. So mm -hmm. that was my criticism of retro camera. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's move on from apps and jump into the voicemails. You can uh, leave us a voicemail. Go ahead and give us a call at 347-SHOW-AAA, or you can send us an email, aaa at twit.tv. Uh, but we're going to start with the what, okay, loosely called uh, voicemails because we actually have two <laughs> video mails that were emailed to us awesome. uh, at AAA at tw uh, twit.tv. So this first one is uh, actually a review of SPB Shell, and here we go. Hey guys, I heard you talking about the uh, SPB shell uh, home screen alternative and uh, couldn't wait to download it. It is pretty somewhat responsive. You can see there's a little bit of lag there. The one thing I don't like is that if, say, if I wanted to move this icon over to here, it doesn't really let me do that. That's lame. So the cool stuff is kind of in the 3D stuff. And uh, like it'll go by itself here and kind of show you kind of the cool 3D effects that they use and uh, the custom widgets. Another cool thing, instead of having to slide back and forth, you can uh, press down on this and just kind of go from one screen to another. Another thing I really like is that instead of having to move, if you wanted to move all your icons to one screen, instead of having to move them all one by one, now I can just grab the screen cool. and move it over here. Reorder your screens. Their custom fine. widgets are actually pretty nice. For instance, if this is the messaging widget. So if I click right here, I can kind of go through all my last you know, okay. messages I've gotten. These are my favorite contacts. The gallery widget's pretty cool. You can kind of flip through your mm. photos. So that's about it's it. Kind of honeycomb um, I don't know that I will uh, hang on to it because I think I'm actually kind of missing Launcher Pro. Uh, it's just a lot more customization, especially with the dock. That's about it. All right, thanks, guys. Right on. Thanks Thank you, for... Alex. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks for I'll admit, that. I'll admit, I immediately downloaded it after you showed it to me, Jason. Did... Oh, oh, really? So you oh, have interesting. It oh, oh, yeah, I have gosh. it. I have it. Yeah. I... Now, I... the thing is, I'm not actively using it. I've played with it. And, and honestly, I've gotten a lot of oohs and ahs at parties when, uh -huh. I... when I'm like, oh, check this out. And I, and I showed the <laughs> spinning and stuff like that. I haven't had time to sit down and customize all those panes okay. to my icons, to my setup, to all stuff like that. And I actually, when I initially tried to do it, I was on the bus and I was trying to play with it a little. And I was somewhat frustrated by, I felt as if it was too limiting. I wanted it to be a little more, um, a little more flexible, but it was a little limiting in terms of their widgets and what they want on the various panes, on the communications pane or the messaging pane or the phone pane or stuff like that. Right. But, like um, you had the same experience as Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it was really, really cool, and I love the effects, and it just fell a little short. But I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to set it up and use it for a week and see how it goes. So. Cool. Yes. Yeah, somebody on Twitter actually hit me up over the weekend and said, "Hey, I, you know, I heard the review of SPV Shell. I downloaded it. It's great, but my major complaint is, and I didn't know about this, and this would be a big deal, is that you can't install regular widgets on it. Yeah, oh, they're right. That was exactly, not yes. Not yeah. work for you, someone uh, like me. No, absolutely. I thought, ex I thought of you, <laughs> No way. Uh, okay, I've decided I'm not going to download it now. Yeah, well, you know <laughs> no, what? It looks I, really cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it does look cool. Yeah, you're getting it for the look of it. I'm hoping that for $15, they're going to put a lot of time into, you know, continuing the development and, and fine-tuning it and everything and adding in that functionality. Not being able to install widgets, it's yeah. kind of a deal-breaker, I think, because fun. every, you know, tons of apps that you have installed on your phone have the ability to, you know, offer up widgets that you're yeah. probably using in one shape, way, shape, or form to throw all of that to the side because you like the 3D effect of SPV 3D. I, I don't know if that's a, you know, if that's a good uh, trade-off. And I also had, I, I had uh, not consistent lag in that every now and then it would be a little laggy, but uh -huh. then, but then I'd go back to it and it's fine. So right. I guess it all depends on what applications are running in the background. And I've got a Nexus S. It's not like I've got a, a yeah. older phone. Not like I'm running a droid, so. But, uh, <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, it's real, but it's, but uh, admittedly, I got a lot of wows. Like, we were doing a iPhone-Android comparison at a party. I'm like, yeah, well, look at this. And I, you know, blew everybody away with it, yeah. so. Oh, cool. Yeah. I had no it's, idea that you got that. Uh, that's yeah, great. totally. 
<laughs> right on. All right. Well, we have another video voicemail, this Very time good. from a friend of friend of Twit, Joshua Caleb, uh, who sends in a little quick uh, mini review of Color Note. And here we go. Greetings, Agent 7 We've installed a new program on your smartphone. Q calls it Color Note. Not only can you record mission intel on it, but you can pin post-it notes to your home screen and set customized reminders for critical mission objectives. However, due to security, you will be unable to synchronize this data directly to the base computer. You're on your own, AAA. Good luck. Whoa. That kind of, is kind of, so kind of freaky. fancy. <laughs> Good job. I am so impressed. Short, wow. to the point, and it's yeah. like a mission now. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Totally. We got to get on that. So, Color Note. I had never heard of I Color Note before. Not- yeah, right. I think okay. it, kind of the big takeaway is, are the uh, the notes that you can pin to your desktop here, which Very is cool. kind of a nifty little. Oops. It's like ah. those little stickies, uh, stickies on OSX. Yeah. So. yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, if anyone uses it, you know, let us know uh, what you think. Thank you so much, Joshua, for sending that in. Looks like it's free, too. So, it's always a plus. <laughs> always a plus. plus. Absolutely. Um, all right, so we should uh, probably finish it with a few uh, quick emails. I think we have a couple here. I'm just going to touch on a really just a few very quick uh, notes about our last week's apps, the to-do apps. Uh, just a couple of people wrote in with some that you may have missed and one that we I know we mentioned. Chris Bowden said thanks for the recommendations. He's been using Astrid since his first Android phone. Uh, my touch 3g and uh, it was pretty the only you know, pretty much the only task app out there the only really good one uh, I did have you know syncing with remember the milk at the time they discontinued support for that uh, and since then they've aligned with productive and uh, he's been s- syncing with that service ever since and so Absolutely loves uh, Astrid. Uh, speaking of Remember the Milk, Bassam in Whittier, California wrote, wrote in to say that I can't believe you guys didn't talk about Remember the Milk to-do app for Android. It integrates very nice with the website, has tons of flexibility for creating lists of to-dos, tagging them, creating reminders, and assigning tasks to others. There's even a really nice widget uh, that I use to show me today's tasks. That is, of course, unless you have SPB. 3D, in which case you can't use that widget. Uh, Juan <laughs> Vasquez also wrote in about, uh, let's see here, what is it? Doit.im. D O I T. That looks really oh, hot. Oh, you feel well, it? Well, no, it just, I saw the website actually, and that um, made me want to download it. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to check it out. It's free. Too. Yeah, Juan says it's a Chinese website with a very nice Android app, which also syncs to your Google Calendar, actually placing to-dos on a calendar of its own, which is kind of a nifty little uh, nifty feature to actually put, put those into a calendar instead of just creating a task. And then finally, Vance14 on Twitter, at Vance14, wrote, uh, wrote to me really quick earlier today and said, Taskos is a great, simple Google Task sync list. So there's a few more options. That's probably mm-hmm. a lot of these were other in, uh, yeah. in the pie, you know, the, the number one voted uh, segment of last week's poll. All right, uh, one last email, and this is from Mike, and I really wanted to uh, have all of us answer because he's going on vacation next month. And uh, he says, hello, I'm going to be visiting uh, Venice, Italy next month. I understand they have citywide wireless, which I wasn't aware of, um, but will it be available to a tourist? My Sprint Hero HTC and my wife's Palm Pre won't be any use as cell phones, but... Will we have enough usability through Wi-Fi? I've grown dependent on the phone, being able to locate me and provide local maps and directions and that Google Trans and that Google Translate will be available. Should I look into renting a smartphone in Italy just for the internet access? Will my Google Voice be sufficient to keep me in contact with those here at home? Haven't been anywhere since before I had a smartphone, Mike. Um, all right, well, like I mentioned, didn't realize that they had citywide wireless. I've never been to Venice, so I no, can't... Um, been there. But yeah, the citywide wireless is always, it's the kind of thing you it's see it come funky. off and you're like, ooh, great, and you just and can't get a solid work. connection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this could be different. I don't know. Yep. None of us have been to Venice. Recently, yeah, right? I don't know. Maybe someone uh, in the chat room. Has anybody in the chat room been to Venice to... Um, yeah, go ahead and hit up in the chat room at okay. some point. Here, I so can say I've, I've traveled internationally recently, but not to Italy, to Spain, and I basically, uh, this doesn't have... Uh, well, at least T-Mobile doesn't have an international data plan with this phone, the Nexus S. So I just basically used the Wi-Fi in the hotel. And I just mm-hmm. basically decided that I'm not going to have a phone um, yeah. because the international data plans are very expensive. You might want to take a look and ask a Sprint if they, you know, what their data plans are. I'm guessing they're going to be really, really expensive per megabyte if you're just going to use the Internet, um, if you haven't done so already, Mike. But you could try it or, you know, 
Hey, it's your vacation, right? <laughs> yeah, fly, just Maybe turn yeah. off. Yeah, yeah some people yeah, consider the, the turning. Thing, yeah, the one consider thing you that. Do vacation. is definitely uh, check with Sprint to see what the international plan is. If you're not doing it, uh, turn off roaming. Turn off data roaming. Oh my God, yes. If Especially you do even that, when you cross those international borders <laughs> on the yep. plane, make sure you're on. Turn it off within your phone. Make your make sure you're on airplane mode. All of that stuff. But I mean, you're not you're not going to go without your phone. So you'll have your phone there, so you can check out, you yeah. know, if the Wi-Fi works. Exactly. I mean, somebody in the chat room uh, <laughs> pointed out. I mean, do you really want to rely on that service? Waldo in the chat room says, <laughs> even if they do, do you really want to rely on that service? Because citywide Wi-Fi can be very iffy, and you probably yeah. don't. So it might you know, behoove you to kind of look into your service plans. Just, yeah, you need just to, you if need, it's that you important to, to you. You need to plan for the fact that you won't have it. Yeah, And that you, you might have Wi-Fi in the hotel and bring your laptop and, and plan ahead, write stuff down. But when you're out in the field, you might not have it. And so if you do, I, the Wi-Fi works, bonus, awesome. Um, but don't plan as if you're going to have it. It does so. bring up a really good point, though. You know, when, you know, I use my phone for everything, including navigation, even in an area that I know really well, in the mm -hmm. Bay Area, or reasonably well, I still use navigation because it's just easy and, mm -hmm. and yep. I just do. So you put yourself into a foreign land where you know absolutely nothing about where you are, where you would need navigation and that type of stuff most. And, yeah, I mean... I don't know. It's kind of a hard situation to suddenly jump in. The, the time you need it most is the time that it's probably going to cost you an arm it. and a leg if, yeah. if you want to use it. So I do recall it renting phones. Now, I don't know if it was a smartphone or not. It was around $30 a day. Um, this was in Spain. I don't... I don't does, you know, does Sprint I don't have really SIM know. cards on their phones? Because I know T-Mobile, I could just pop my SIM card out and That's put true. a put an international SIM card in and use it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to I that question. Yeah. I, Anybody, I don't have should. Sprint. None of us have Sprint in this room. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone Anybody? in the Does anybody... Uh, no SIM. No, no. SIM. No. Okay, Two at once. Go. So oh. that's, co Thank that's you. confirmed enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Mike, you, I hope room. we answered your question. Um, you know, we haven't been to that particular city, and um, I don't know. I'm not going to say, you know, good luck. Oh, interesting. So in the chat options. room, uh, Buggy just posted a link in europeforvisitors.com, which kind of explains uh, the Wi-Fi in Venice. Oh, and? and? Yeah. yeah, and it says... Um, so it says, uh, please note, uh, Venice's Cita uh, Dinaza Digitale Wi-Fi network does not cover the whole city. Services available primarily in the major squares or on a few major pedestrian thoroughfares like the Zatere and the Via Garbaldi along the Grand Canal. Uh, the Cita Dinaza Digitale uh, shows where you can get, expect to find a symbol, a signal. Um, so it looks okay. like it's in some places, but not so much. Yeah, so, yeah. it's kind of what we kind thought. Kind of what we figured. You know, yeah. I wouldn't depend on it. And the so. cost was two two point five euro per day. Oh, so it, to for two point five euro, you could take a risk, maybe. So yeah, that's yeah. not bad. Yeah. All Good right. luck, Mike. Good Let luck. us know. Send us pictures using vignette or little photo or yeah, right, camera. exactly. Perfect. Whatever. We'll run it in the show if you do that. <laughs> at twit.tv. And I believe that, that that's it. That's it for this week. Thank you, Ron. Where can uh, where can people find you? My pleasure. People can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash ronxo, or you can go to my websites, uh, websites I work for, ifanboy.com, all about comic books, or graphically.com, digital comics on your on your Android and your, your Android tablet devices, as well as iPad, and yeah, all that stuff like that. So good times. And, uh, and you can check out my personal blog at ronxo.com if you like my music adventures. All right so. on. Cool. And you, Eileen, go. Uh, just uh, find me on Twitter <laughs> at Eileen <laughs> TV. <laughs> Awesome. All right, and you can find me at Raygun01 on Twitter. And that is it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, you can be a part of the show by sending us a voicemail at 347-SHOW-AAA. Or you can send us an email, AAA at twit.tv. Uh, go ahead and follow us, uh, us on Twitter. We're actually on Twitter for the show, at Android Show. And you can catch us live every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. Everybody have a fantastic week, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, we got another extra special note. Uh, next week, we're going to do two shows. Our regular show, we're going to talk about podcast apps. And then after that, immediately after, we are going to do an all- 
viewer listener request yeah, show. Yeah, total total user and listener and viewer feedback. Yeah. Community episode. feedback show. There you go. We want to answer your questions. A lot of the questions that we haven't even gotten to yet. I feel bad. We're going to answer all of those questions and more. Whatever you guys email, voicemail, Twitter us, we will get in there and answer. That's right. A -A 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 TV. Send it to us by next Monday, the 24th? To the 24th. Uh, uh, ah. <laughs> Ah! It's the 24th of Sunday. It's the 25th. Right. We're going to do well, this close all enough. on the you 25th. If you did it by the 24th, they would have made it. So. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> going to do two shows on the 25th. Regular show and all listener viewer show. So be there.